Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayyami, Saito Lamed Vav. We begin right on top of our Ahmed and right in the middle of uh, the way the Brisa is describing what occurred on that day that Klal Yisrael crossed the Jordan River into Eretz Yisrael. Says the Gemara on the top line, Boy Ure, come have a close look. Kamanism, Nasu, Boy Sayyim, how many miracles occur on that day when Klal Yisrael crossed the Yardin? So the water splits. And what happens? Ovru Yisrael Sayardin. Everybody crosses over. What else happens on that day? They travel a great distance. Uvo Har Grizim Har Evil. And they get all the way to Har Grizim and Har Evil where they did the brachas and clothes. How far was it? Very far. Yasser Mishisha Mil, greater than 60 mil of travel. And they did it at breakneck speed, overcoming all. Obstacles. And no creature, man or animal, could stand in their way. And anybody that challenges them, Yad Nitra, suddenly he loses all control over his bowel movements. His body becomes dysfunctional. Hashem will cast his awe before Kali Yisrael. says Rashi, Upsetting the system, dysfunctioning the system. And in fact, we have the Pasuk in Az Yashir as well. Hashem will spread his awe and his fear on those nations. Ad Yavar Am Hashem is a reference to Zubia Rishonim when Klal Yisrael enters Eretz Yisrael the first time when they cross the Jordan. The Pasuk continues. Ad Yavar Am when your dear nation will cross over. What's the double crossing here? Oh, a totally different era in history. Zubi Yashniyah, that's when they entered Eretz Yisrael the second time around. After coming back from Golos Babel, they entered Eretz Yisrael with Ezra HaSoifer. At that time as well, they were supposed to experience great miracles. A more mi'ata we can deduce from here. Ru'u Yinhoyu Yisrael. Kalal Yisrael was indeed worthy and deserving. To experience miracles, to come up with pomp and independence. But be Shnia that second time around, after Golas Bowl, Kibia Rishaina, just like the first time around during Yeshua's entry. So, why didn't it happen? Why did they have to do it sort of, you know, incrementally with Rishus from the authorities? Elo Shegora Machet, because of the Chet that they did during the Bayis Rishain. Because of that, there was a xera cast upon them that they will come back, but in a limited fashion. Okay, so we were in Eretz Yisrael. We're traveling to Har Grisim and Har Eval. So they brought along with them those stones with their, which they had transported from the Jordan. Urbanam was a mezbeach. Used it to build a mezbeach. Visedu besid covered it with plaster. Vikos valeim is called the Torah. B'shivim loshen upon which they wrote the entire Torah in seventy languages. Shnemar bayer hetev very well explained for all to understand and to see. They brought the carbonis, oil and shlamim, the achal v'shasu, the simchu. They ate and drank, and the simchu they were happy. Ubirchu v'kilu. Then they declared the brachas and kolos. The kiplo savanim. They dismantled the mizbeach, took apart the stones. Ubo v'lono begilgal, and they went and they stayed overnight in Gilgal, and that's where they established the stones. Shenemar v'avartem oisam imachem enachtem oisam b'malin. Take those stones with you to your place of lodging. Yochah b'kol malin malin. Perhaps that means they have to take along with them wherever they sleep, from place to place. No, tamaloimar asher talina b'halayla where you lodge tonight. That's it, you leave it there. Uksiv, in fact, we have the Pasik in Yeshua Dald, which corroborates this whole chain of events. Those 12 stones which they took from the Jordan, they took with them um, all, the, all the way to Hargrizim and back to Gilgal. Continues the Gemara. We have a Pasik in Shmois Chav Gimel, Pasik Chavches, which reads as follows Hashem promises, There was a creature. A scary creature called Tzira. I will send it ahead of you into Eretz Yisrael. It's going to chase away the Chivi, the Knani, and the Chiti. The fact that the Pasuk only makes reference to a limited number of nations would indicate to us that the Tzira creature never really entered Eretz Yisrael. Tana, Tzira, Loi, Avrahimam did not really cross the Jordan with Klal Yisrael. 
Rather, it wreaked its havoc from somewhere outside of Yisrael. And that's why it only chased away those nations which lived on the other side of Jordan, on the east side, in Eivr Yardin. Eretz Sichain Vaig, as Rashi and Chumash explains. For why, really? You never crossed the Jordan in the Eretz Yisrael? Vaxiv, the same Pasuk says that the Chivi, which was a local nation in Eretz Yisrael, was also affected by the Tzira. V'shalach, this Tzira lefanecha. And the Pasuk continues, it's going to banish the Chivi. Well, if it never entered Eretz Yisrael, how did it reach the Chivi? Amar Shem Malakish, very simple, long distance. Al Sfas Yadin Amda. This tzira stood at the east bank of the Jordan. So it banished the, you know, the local, Sichon Va'ayik, and it also affected the Chivi, which were stationed right on the other side of the Jordan. al Svas Yardin Amda, it stood at the eastern river bank of the Yardin. Ve'zarka ben Moran tossed its poison to the other side, ve'simsa name and blinded them milamala. It blinded their upper, you know, upper area, the eyes, of Isir Sasa Malamata, and sterilized them at the lower part of their body. Shunem Ava Noiche Shmati Samoir Pnehem. Asher Kigoyva Rosam Gova, I destroyed the Amoiri before Kali Yisrael, who were strong as cedars. They were as high as the cedars, the Chosnu Kaloinim, and as mighty as the aloin trees. The Ashmid Piriyami Mal, the Sharashim Mitachas, and I destroyed, I damaged their eyes which are called piriyoy in this case, as the Marshal explains, because eyes facilitate actions. We see, and that's what we do. Mimal v'sharsha mitachas, and as well as something below, sterilize them under their roots, their continuity. That's one approach. There was one tzira positioned on the eastern side of the river. Rav Papa Amar, the answer to your question is, shtei tziroi's havoi, there were really two times we had help from this Tzir'a creature, Chada the Moshe, Vachada the Yeshua. One, during Moshe Rabbeinu's time, which is described in that first passage, which never crossed the Jordan, and the other one was during Yeshua's time, Chada the Yeshua, the Moshe Le'ava, the one in Moshe's time didn't cross, so it only affected the locals on the eastern side of the Jordan, Eretz Sichan Vaig, right? The Yeshua Ava, the other Tzira creature, the time of Yeshua did, in fact, cross over into Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Canaan, and it banished the locals over there. Okay, back to the Mishnah, which describes the process of the Bracha Yitzvaklolis. Shlisha Shvatim Olul Resh Hargrizim, six Shvatim climb up Hargrizim, and six climb up Har Evo. So the Pasuk says, as such, right, that there were chetzoi, um, half of Kali Yisrael were up on Har Grizim, and the other half on was Mul Har Evil, right? Why does the Pasuk use the Loshan V'hachetzoi, the known half? Should have just said chetzi. The hachetzi sounds like something special, something known from you know from elsewhere. Omer of Kahana. If you ever wondered which six shvatim stood on which mountain, it's like this: Kederach shachalukim kan kach chalukim bavni eifoid. The same division we have here. We have in the eifoid two stones which were right above the breastplate of the kain gadol which had six shvatim engraved in each stone. The same division we have there, we have here. That's why it says v'achetzi. The same half engraved there. That's how they, they divided the shvatim here. Meisvei, we have a kasha from a brysa that the division was a totally different type of arrangement than we had on the eifrit. Kengal carried two precious stones on his shoulders. One on either side. Upon which the names of the twelve tribes were engraved. Six on this stone. Six on the other. Right? So the Pasuk speaks about six on one stone. And the Pasuk continues. Names of the six leftovers, Al Evan on the second stone, and the Pasuk adds the word 
Ketoil Dyson, in the order in which they were born. So we learn from here that stone number two had the six Shvatim in the order of their birth. Rashi brings it here. Rashi here is seven, eight lines from the bottom. Ketoil Dyson, says Rashi, Keseder Leidosan, the way they were born. Shishachreinim Kisidrim. So the uh, last six on the second stone were in order. God, Ba'asher, Yisachar, Zvulun, Yosef, Ubinyam. Zeo say the Ladosan, that's the order of their birth. But, let's just go back to the Gemara for a second. Shniya Ketol Dosan, that was the order on stone number two. Below Rishonah Ketol Dosan. But the Shvatim, which were on the first stone, were not in the order of their birth. Why not? Because we have one out of order. Okay, Yehuda was meant to be first on that list of that first stone. Let's go back to Rashi. Uh, now it's uh, five lines from the bottom. So on one, the second stone, we have them in order. Vishisha Rishonim says Rashi. Yehuda was Yehuda, Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Don, Naftali. So other than Yehuda, other than Yehuda, it was all in order of birth. But Yehuda came first. Okay, the Hamisha Oishis, how you giving us a total of 50 letters combined from both stones? Esr Machamish 11 Zu, 25 on this stone. Esr Machamish 11 Zu, 25 letters on stone number two as well. Rabbi Hanina Begam Leil Aimer. Loi, Kaseida Shechalukin. Bechomish Apkudim, Chalukin Babni Eva. He disagrees. He says, the division of the names on the stones of the Eifah did not reflect the Seder that we find in Chumash HaPkudim, which is right in the beginning of Bamidbar. We have uh, the names of the representatives of the Shvatim. So that system, that order, did not match the Avni Eifah. Ella rather, Kedera Shechalukin Chumash Sheni. Rather, it followed the order that we find in Chumash number two, which is of course, Vela Shmois. And over there, the order is as follows. Let's see Rashi. Three lines from the top. B'chumash Sheni, B'tchilas Vela Shmois. So the Shvatim was arranged in all kinds of orders. We have uh, one in the beginning of Bamidbar, one in the beginning of Shmois. We have uh, an order of birth. So this Shita says, well, the Eifu did not reflect, the, the Seder of Bamidbar did not reflect necessarily the order of birth. Rather, it reflected the Seder of Chumash Shemais. Says Rashi, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Zvon, Ba'achas Mem, on one stone. And Bashni, on the second stone, we have Binyamin, Dan, Benaftali, God, Ve'asher, Ve'yosef. Okay, so that was his system. Ketzad, okay, the more continues on the third line from the top. Ketzad, what was the order? Bnei Leia ke Sidran. So uh, Leia's uh, children were in order, in order of birth. Okay, so it was partially in order of birth. Stone number one had Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Zohar, Zvon, that was Kisei, that's all the sum. And in the uh, stone number two, we have it like this. B'nai Rachel, in terms of Rachel's children, Binyamin and Yosef, they were on both sides. One at the beginning, one at the end. Echad Mekan, Echad Mekan. So you have Binyamin to start it off, and Yosef at the end, two sons of Rachel. And the children of the Shvachis, the maid servants, Bill and Zilpah, they came in between Binyamin and Yosef. So you have Binyamin, then comes Dan, Ben Aftali, God, Vasha, and then Yosef. So according to the Shita, why does the Pastor describe the stones as having the names Kiltol Doisim in accordance with their birth? Order, if it wasn't so, the answer is Kishmoisam, Shukurul and Avian. The point is that the names reflected the names the way Yaakov Avinu gave it to them. Reuben, Shimon, Levi, like that. But like Yishemois, Shekarlahen, Moshe, as opposed to the way Moshe re- relate, referred to them, we find in Pasha's Pinchas, Ruveni, Shimoni. No, no, that's not uh, the way they were written on the Aphoid. It was Ruben, Vlei Ruveni, not Ruveni. Shimon, Vlei Shimon, Don, Vlei Hadoni, God, Vlei Hagod. 
Bottom line, both these shittas in the Bryce, who give us the seder of the Avni Ephod, those uh, systems did not correspond to the um, system used on Har Grizim. Right? Har Grizim and Har Eva, we don't have this system. And therefore, it's going to be a Tiyufta, the Rav Kahana Tiyufta. Okay, it's going to be a, a Stira, a Kasha Rav Kahana. Why? So let's take a look at Rashi again. Seven from the top. Tiyufta Rav Kahana. The Lukuliyama, because according to all Shittas in this price, ain't the Seder Hagrizim Harevo. It didn't match Hagrizim and Harevo. The Lu Seder Hagrizim, because in Hagrizim we had a totally different system. We had a fourth system. Shimon, Balebi, Yudhi, Yisachos, Vyesh, Binyamin. That was Hagrizim. But Harevo had Reuben, God, Basha, Zvon, Don, Maftol. So apparently it's a totally different system. Asks the Gemara, but Rav Kana was coming from somewhere. Vehachetzir, remember, right? The Division reflected some other division which we had elsewhere. So why does the Pasuk make that reference? The half, the known half. The answer is like this. Vehachetzi means, this is Har Evo. On Har Evo we had Vehachetzi. It was only part of the half. Meaning, on Har Grizim there was a, a bigger half than Har Evo. More people on Har Grizim than Har Evo. Tana, we learned in Abraisa, Chetzir Shemul HaGrizim, the one facing HaGrizim, was Meruba. Mechetzir Shemul HaGrizim was greater in number than they have on HaRevo. Why? Because they were missing some people. Mepnei Shalevi Lamata. Because uh, a portion of Shevet Levi, Rashi says, the elders of Shevet Levi, the uh, Ziknei Kuhuna Velevia was standing together with the Oren between the mountains, on the way on the bottom, between the mountains. So basically, you're missing some people. So they had the lesser half. Question, what do you mean? Adra, which is the opposite. Who was on Har Grizim? Levi. Shevet Levi was on Har Grizim. So if they're missing some members, if because they're Part of Levi is down on the bottom, Batsu, so they have less on Har Grizim. And we're saying that Har Evil had less. He means like this. Even if a portion of Shevet Levi was sitting on the bottom and not on the mountain, not joining their brethren on Har Grizim, still Har Grizim was greater. Why? Because they had Yosef, which was a super jumbo Shevet. But in Yosef, Imam, they had Ben Yosef, which were a very large shevet that made up for the missing members. Shanemar is the Pasuk in the Yeshua makes reference to the great numbers in the shevet of Yosef. So when they allotted all the portions of Eretz Yisrael to the Shvatim, B'nai Yosef had a complaint. Not enough for us. Why are you only giving us one portion, one area? I have a great, great crowd. responds to them, If indeed you are blessed with multitudes, don't uh, show it off. Go up to the forest. He tells them, Go hide in the forest. Don't make it so visible and obvious that you're you're zeicha to a bracha and abundance. I don't want the evil eye. People might become jealous of you. I don't want it to reach you to affect you. So they responded, not to worry. Don't you know that the kids of Yosef are beyond Ayn Hara? We're protected. Evil eye does not affect us. The as the pasuk says by Yosef at Sadik, he was careful with his, with his eyes. And he was zeichet the protection for his kids. Ben peras Yosef, ben peras Ali Oyin. What does Ali Oyin mean? Vamar vo al tehei kore Ali Oyin. Instead of reading it literally, Ali Oyin, read it ela Oyli Oyin. They rise above the reach of one's eye. They're beyond being affected by Ayin Hara. Rabbi Yosef, I have another source for this idea. Yid go lo roi bekerav aretz. Yaakov Inu gave Yosef at Tzadik's children this bracha. They should be like fish. What's the connection to fish? 
Ma dogum should be yam, just as the fish at sea, my machas and alain, they're covered, constantly covered by water. Ve'eno ayin shalat zavahen, and they're not under the spell of anybody's eyes. Nobody can uh, notice them. Avzarei shal Yosef, likewise Yosef descendants, ve'eno ayin shalat zavahen, eyes cannot control them and cannot affect them. Now, back to the price. With the Avnei Ha'efoid, we said, we spoke about 50 letters in total, 25 letters on each stone. Asks the Gemara, but the numbers don't add up. How do you get to 50 letters? If you tally the letters, you end up with 49. It's 50 minus 1. Yosef HaTzadik was echa to an addition. Another letter was added to his name when he was Moisir Nefesh to maintain his purity. Shanemar Eidus B'yehoyseif. Some B'yetzeshel at Mitzrayim. He got that extra hey. For a total of 50 letters. Mask of letter of Nachman Maritzchak. How can you spell Yosef? Yehoyosef. Kitol Doisim Be'inun. We just spoke about the names being their original names. The way Yaakov Inu gave it to the Shvatim. And at that point, it was just Yosef without the hey. So where's the missing letter? El lo kol atero kulo binyamin ksev. The answer is, in the word binyamin, we add another letter. Because typically we find binyamin with just one yud. Vach binyamin shalim. And in the aphoid, it was written in full with a second yud, kidech siv, v'aviv. Karalai binyamin. And in fact, we find that Yaakov Avinu called him with a full, uh, full spelling, binyamin, and that's how he was written into the uh, aphoid. So that's the missing letter for a total of 50. Amar of Chana Bar Bizna, Amar of Shem Bar Chasid. Yosef, Shekidesh, Shem Shemayim Baseis. Yosef, who sanctified Hashem's name, out of, uh, in private, out of sight, when he withstood, when he overcame that temptation with the wife of his, uh, of his boss, when he withstood that Nisayin, Hayisifu Olov Oisachas Mishmoish Hakadosh Baruch Hu, he was granted another letter from Hashem's name, that hey that we spoke about before. That's Yosef Atzadik. Yehuda, Shekidesh Shem Shemayim Farhesya. Yehuda who sanctified Hashem's name in public, as we're going to see later in the Gemara. Nikra Kuloi Al Shmoish Hakadosh Baruch Hu. He was zeichet that his entire name is based on Hashem's name, and uh, initially when he was born, he was given that name. Because this was his destiny. Yosef, the incident of Yosef. Mayhi, what exactly happened? The as the Pasuk says. Okay, the day has come. Yosef returns to his boss's home to engage in Malachtoi. What is that? We learn from here. Both the woman and Yosef intended to do the Dvaravir. And how do we know this? Because the Pesach speaks about the fact that there was nobody home. So apparently this was their plan, and they were both planning on doing the Aver. But actually, it's not so clear. There's a Machlekes. He came home to do the Malacha. What does Malachta mean? Rav There's a Machlekes between these two Amirim. Chad Amar Lassus Malachta Mamish. He simply came home to, uh, you know, engage in uh, regular business, uh, whatever he needs to do, uh, in his boss's home, the other sheet holds that in fact he planned on engaging with this woman. And the Pasuk says, There was nobody, none of the um, residents were home. Asks the Gemara, How could that be? He had a huge uh, you know, crowd that lived in that house. A lot of servants. Nobody was home. Nobody. If Efsha Bayes Godel could be such a big home, a busy home, Kibesa Shel Oisei Russia, such as the home of this evil man, Lo Yehoyu Bayish, was nobody home. How could it be in uh, totally empty? Tana Der Bishmol. The reason is like this. It was a special day. Everybody went to uh, to church. Oisei Ayayim Edom Hoyim Chagim. It was their holiday. They went to serve their idol. 
and she, uh, the mistress, complained to them that she's not well. Choylani, I'm sick. Amr, she says, well, this is a great opportunity. This is a great opportunity to get Yosef to engage with me. So she pretended to be unwell, and she stayed home. But if you say, she grabbed his garment and tried to convince him. And he almost was tempted. Boy, so shot at that very moment. Bosso, the Yuknoi shall of at that very moment. Yosef Atzadik's father, Yaakov Avinu's image, was revealed to him. Ben the Rasalei Bechaloi through the window. Amaloi and that image addressed Yosef. Yosef, listen to me. Asidan Achecha. In the future, your brothers are going to be recorded on the stones of the ephod, which is going to be worn by the Kayin God when he does his avoid. Sheir kasval anfi adni ephod. Vatu b'neim, you're meant to be among. You're meant to be amongst them. Do you want to lose that opportunity for eternity because of some sort of uh, cheap temptation? Rutsoyincha sheir mocha shimcham b'neim. Do you want your name to be erased from amongst them, to be counted out? V'tikari reyazonis. Who be considered one who pursues immoral women? It's one who does that. Ya'abed hoin, he loses wealth. Rashi says, hoin is shame to his good name. You want to lose your good name? Yosef was jolted back to reality and he overcame the Nisoyen Miyad. What does that mean? He was very close and he held back. Sheshava Kashtoy. She says, the zero of a person is like, a, like an arrow, because it shoots like an arrow. The sun it returned to its, its source. What does that mean? He did something with his fingers, with his hands. No, He planted his fingers very, very stiffly on the ground, and that discomfort, that pain, quieted things down, calmed them down. And... His zera actually um, came up, up, out of the out of his fingers, but the avera he did not do. Some say this is uh, it's just a way of speaking. That in any case, the zera somehow left him, but um, he did not do the chet. And the pasha continues, midday aru yakiv. Mishamroya Evan Yisrael. What does Midei Avri Yaakov mean? What caused? What brought about? Sheyichokik alav ne'eva that Yosef should keep that privilege of being inscribed on the stones of the Eifod. Ela Avri Yaakov it only happened through Yaakov Avinu speaking to him and discouraging him. And the passage continues Mishamroya Evan Yisrael Misham because of that Zohar ben Aseroya, Yosef became a leader of Kal Yisrael. Instead of being a Roya Zainis, who uh, pastures with Irmor women, he became a, a Roya uh, a shepherd of Kal Yisrael, a leader. Shanama Roya Yisrael Azino, Noyeg, Katsoyin Yosef, Hashem leads Kal Yisrael like the Tsoyin of Yosef. So we see a reference to uh, shepherding and leadership by Yosef at Sati. Tanya, we learned in a price. If not for this incident with Eishas Petipar, Roy Yosef, Lord says me, you'd be a shvatim. It was really meant for Yosef to have 12 shvatim of his own. Kederach, Shayotzim, Yaakov Avinu, such, just as Yaakov Avinu had. He's going to be a carbon copy of Yaakov Avinu. Shnema Eilu Teles Yaakov, Yosef. The same Telodis, offspring that Yaakov had, was meant to come from Yosef as well. Ela shiyotza shifa zari, ibein tziparni yadav. The reason why he didn't have twelve kids is because of the zera that uh, left him this way. But still, but still, afal pikein yotzu mibinyamin achiv. So, initially he would have had twelve kids, but since the um, zera came from the ten fingers that he lost, and he was left only with the two remaining kids, Menashe and Ephraim. But still, says the Gemara, even though he wasn't zeichem, but. His brother was um, to an abundance of children, which uh, made up for him, so to speak. Um, 
So Binyamin had all these kids, and ultimately Rachel, Imenu was Zaycha Taka to have all this. And they all related to uh, to Yosef as well. The Kula Nikru Al Shmoy. In fact, their names were a reflection of Yosef Atzadik Shenema. As the Pasuk tells us, the following were Binyamin's ten children. Ubinay Binyamin, Bella, Ubechar, Vashpel. The more explains all their names related to Yosef. Bella, what is that? Shnivla Ben Umois. A reference to Yosef who was swallowed up amongst the nations. Ubechar, what's that? Again, Yosef, who was Bechar the Imoy, first born to his mother. Bechar the Imoy Hayah. Va'ashbel, what is that? Shishav Ekel, Hashem took him into captivity. Gera means, Shagar Bachsan Yais. He lived in a foreign, foreign country, in a foreign, uh, foreign places. V'na'aman, what is that? Shanam be Yaser. Yosef was the utmost, utmost of being pleasant. Achi v'roish. Achihu, Yosef was my bro- is my brother. Vereishihu, my leader, my head. And finally, we have the two last sons of Binyamin. One was Mupim, and then we have Chupim. Mupim and Chupim. So the Gemara is going to explain uh, Chupim, but what about Mupim? So it's interesting. The Gemara doesn't mention it, but but um, Rashi does from the Medrash Rabbi Chuma. Mupim, Rashi says. Ten lines from the bottom. Mupim mefurish be medrash rabbi tan chuma shoyav piv kipi Yaakov Avinu ba alochis shekibul meshem veever. Yosef was as proficient as Yaakov Avinu with those halochis that he got from his teacher, his shem veever. So that's mupim. The chupim that's the tenth son of Benjamin. Again, relating to Yosef's experience. The chupim who who lo rabbi chupasi. He didn't experience my marriage. Vani lo risi bechupasi. I wasn't present during his chup. Sorry, that was uh, eight or nine. Number ten is the Eird. What is that? Shiorid, the Benu Yisraelim, a reference to Yosef, who descended descended amongst the nations. Ikadami, there's another shot in the word the Eird. Shapanab Derm Leverid, his face glows like a like a rose. Amar B'chibar Abba, Amar B'yechna, B'shosh Amar Le'el Paro Le Yosef, U'b'lo'adech Olo Yoram Mishas Yoda. When Paro, Elevated Yosef, he says, "Look, you're in charge. Without you, nobody lifts his hand or feet." So he gave him that uh, that position, that authority. Paris advisors weren't too excited. Amru it's Stagnini Pari. So Paris, you know, stargazers, his uh, wise man, turned to him. He says, "This lowly slave, Ebed Shalokhe Rabbi Esrim Kesef, this Ebed." whose master purchased him for twenty uh, coins. Tam Shileo Leinu, you're gonna. Impose him upon us? He's going to lead us? What's going on? Amalan, he responds, You know, I can tell. I see, you know, indications of royalty in him. Rashi explains, Chachma, wisdom, gvura, v'yayfi. So, uh, yeah, he is fitting for the job. He's fit for the job. Amalan, so they told him, Okay, im kein if he's meant to be a king, then um, he's got to know all 70 languages. That's a uh, prerequisite. And of course, Yosef did not know them. So suddenly, Bo Gavriel, Gavriel the Malach came, gave him a crash course. Vilim Shivim Loshin, all 70 languages, boom. Well, you have a Kagomer, but he didn't really, uh, he couldn't uh, internalize the languages. At that point, he got that extra letter, that hey, perhaps because there are five uh, forms of expression, tongue, lips, throat, right? The 22 letters are divided into five categories, emanating from different parts of the of the um, you know, mouth, and etc. So the He gave him the ability to master all the languages. The Apostle continues, So he was able to internalize the languages because of the extra He. So suddenly he has all languages. The next day, when he meets Paroi, he can converse. Any language that Pari tried to engage him with, he was able to respond in that language. But Yosef had one over him. When Yosef engaged him in Lashna Kodesh, Pari is uh, totally not understanding. What are you saying? So Pari tells him, 
Uh, could you teach me the extra language? Agamemnon tried to teach them. But like Gomar, it didn't go in. Amale, so he was stuck with a missing language. Amale ishtabalit le megalis. He made Yosef swear, swear to me that you're not going to tell a secret that I can't uh, speak Lashon Kodesh. Ishtabalit, okay, he swore to him. And that helped him in the long run. Why? Because later on when he, when Yosef was trying to keep his word to Yaakov and his promise to bring him to Eretz Yisrael, and Parai hesitated, didn't want to let him leave. When Yosef told Parai, oh, my father imposed a shvu on me to bring him up to Eretz Yisrael. I can't go with that. I can't, you know, ignore that. Homily, so Parai says, no problem. Zil itchal shvosach. There's a way out. Go uh, annul the shvu. Make a taras in the darn. Homily, so Yosef says, oh, if you're going to go that route, I'm going to go uh, annul and cancel the shvu that I made to you and I'm going to reveal to everybody that you're ignorant in Lashon HaKodesh. Okay, that got him. He was stuck. Even though he wasn't really happy letting Yosef go, Amalei, he reluctantly tells him, Alei, Yukvaris Avicha, go up and tend to your father's burial, Kasher Hishpi Yacha. Okay, what did we learn today? We spoke about the Nisim that occurred upon entering Eretz Yisrael, the great travel, the uh, scare and pachad, which was cast upon the locals. We learned about the Tzir, a creature. We learned how the Shvatim were divided on Hagriz Mahar Evil, how they were divided on the Heichel. We have Bnei Yosef who are beyond Ein Hara. We find uh, Yosef, who was Makadeh Sheshemayim Beseser, he got that extra letter. Instead of Yosef, it was Yehoisef because of his Mesiros Nefesh. All the best to you. Hatzlach Rabbah and Besuris Tev.